Okay, we're going to look into boots. Some boots that were just found just this year, in 2020, about June or so, showing you archaeologists are still working somewhat on certain sites. These are found in the Altai Mountains, and we'll go into that a little bit later in that. But if you look at this boot, they're full knee-high type boots. We'll look into the construction of it a little bit, but maybe you can even make out in the picture here, because I've got it on high def, that there are seams and it's double stitched and so on. Now they're a little bit fancy, aren't they? Because it looks like they have tiger stripes done onto them, but it's done in a red ochre stained material, red and white instead of black and white. And done in a little bit somewhat of a Scythian pattern too, but we'll get into the intricateness of that here shortly. Something you could probably see also is there's a buckled beltish type apparatus at the ankle across the front that you can cinch up, and we'll look into a little bit more of that too. Now these are about 300 BC or so they're rating it at at this point, carbon dating wise. But it's found in a Scythian barrel that's been trapped and pretty much kept. And so, at first, if I didn't give you the dating on this, and I said this was something found from 300 years ago, you'd probably believe it. In fact, when I was a kid, I had a pair of moccasins. I'd say a kid. I almost, well, I, as I totally matured, couldn't get them into them anymore. And it kind of sucked. My foot got a little too wide for them, actually, stuff. But... Mine had the deal where you stitch it up the side and then tie it off and stuff. And really more what you would think of as an Indian moccasin. But we're, because we're talking about ancient Proto-Indo-Europeans up in this land that were hooked with the people that way in ancient times, thousands of years before this had come across that land bridge, maybe give you an idea of where this concept of deer or softened leather, multi-plaid, up-in-set type of moccasins might have come from. So let's take a closer look at this and get into it a little bit. For this was found again in the Altai mountain range, Proto-European lands. You know where that is, up above the Black Sea and so on. Now, one thing is in a modern time, one would think of these as having a hard-soled bottom one of with if it's cowboy boots, which we recently I did a video about cowboys. In fact, this dovetails into it. Here's a cowboy boot, but these are a woman's. In fact, they believed to be a princess in her cowboy boots at the time. They look pretty damn stylish. They got that elf toe pointing going on right there. You, well, it kind of goes out of the screen, doesn't it? What if I talk it one time down like this? Try to get a better look on it here. Maybe it comes into view a little bit there, but you can see. See if I can put two things together by making another comment. If this is a woman's currently belt, currently shoes, a lot of times they may be suede, which is what the whole top of these seems to be, other than the bottom boot. But it's got an insert, which somebody would think, man, in a modern day they started inserting animal patterns and so on. Well, here's one from 300 BC. You can see the stitch that's running up it here and how that's double inside in stitched and yet it has an inside to it and a leaf that's inside of it with an insert inside the bottom which would be much like a sole but it's inside the shoe like an insert situation double stitched into and then the bottom of the shoe is coming over the bottom of that and it's all double stitched something people would think you know how old are these boots when we talked about pants and boots and things like this, and here are some ancient boots way before you would think of, and they're quite stylish. Difference between a modern woman's boots, which these would have been pseudo high heelish or whatever in a modern day, even in a male cowboy boot you see this, and the male when it walks around it clicks and makes noises. Females would have a harder point onto it, and it would give you that clack that it goes along with almost high heeled shoes. If you're going to be fancy, we'll say. But these are more of the boots of a scout or a ranger. In fact, these boots are made for walking and trekking. 
but yet they're done in an extremely fancy way. In fact, that little point there that we're talking about that's over at the right, where it comes up and and has this little point that goes around onto it and a point in the center and it being double stitched looks a lot like golf shoes until a modern day modern day golf shoes they've made into tennis shoes for extreme comfort and things like that and when those first came out i grabbed some of them too but nothing beats the old foot joy styles and so on in fact one thing that i desperately miss from golf and the age of golf and and the way it has changed somewhat uh is the old golf cleats that used to be on the bottom of those golf shoes which had this same point like what you see over here onto it and in that same fact they had those cleats on the bottom and when you walked around with it it made a distinct sound that's a clacking that's well one of its all of its own but that's in a modern day this is 300 BC you can make it out here in the picture that over here there's a heel and a double set and it wraps around and so on. I believe what we're looking at is on the left side is the left shoe and the right side is the right shoe. And you can make out this buckle that's on it to where they can put these on, slide them down, and then snap that, satchel that buckle up tight and cinch it. In fact, they're left in a cinch point and you might even be able to make out that this leather is actually made from a point but then let loose later. But it would have been that style where you have a buckle where you can pull and cinch back onto it and then it holds. Now they're all tiger striped here and you don't really see that double stitching necessarily as of yet in this. But this is a Scythian princess barrel and we talked about how these Scythians, some of them are known to have been the ancient Amazons of old. And so this scout-looking princess comes off kind of weird, and these boots are made for walking, right? Well, the bottom sole of this shoe says little to nowhere at all, and they say, well, they really probably were ceremonial, all made for this one thing. In fact, if you look in the detail of this now, you can see this stitching that's done for each one, and it's done out of different dyed fabrics, where they've taken somewhat of a tan-colored fabric, and then dyed it red ochre or dyed it black and stitched it into there. And somebody says this little front part and lapel here they've got on the shoe has over 30,000 stitches in it. And I believe by the way it was written, though don't quote me on this, that they're talking about per shoe. Now I've seen some people that do some intricate stitch work on jackets and caps and so on nowadays and they say it's got 10,000 stitches and 12,000 stitches and stuff. And looking at the size of this thing, I guess I could possibly believe that. You can also make out here to where this thing is double stitched, like I said, running in its seam there. Maybe you can make out too that, especially up in here, that on the back of this, this all was stitched through a piece of leather. And then it goes over this, where this one goes over that. Now there's an inner liner, in other words, and then there's an outer liner that all comes around this. It has the bottom boot on it. You can see the anklet and the way that it's running here, and then there's that buckle situation. You can pull it tight, and I don't know if you can make it out, but there's a perfect little hole in the end of it. Like if this was a mini belt, that it would have certain little belt holes in it. Well, that's kind of weird, because there's no other belt holes that anybody popped through it. It's all just made to that, and so that's led people to believe that, well, just because they're ceremonial, they didn't go through that, and they never found her sweet spot that she liked, because... Da, da, da. But then the casp there at the time wasn't with the little extra tongue of a belt making it hold at a certain point. These group it up and cinch it in a certain way. And the oddity of this look here all rumpled up shows you that this is real well, well worked leather. And tanned out and done real nicely and they would have been somewhat soft boots and from the inner liner and outer liner hooked together it's somewhat like an elf boot. And we've talked about elves and all these things that go off of it and this definitely has that flair to it. It may not have the super point that you might think of on, on the very tip toe of it, but instead, in this version here, it shows that uh, it's a Oxford style or whatever they used to call them whenever uh, we, we get the shoes, and it's that patent leather thing that a lot of people associate with 1920s and so on and carrying on. Of course, that was a golden age of golf of people in the old days and so on. 
and it carried all the way through that you would have something like that. But where does that style come from? Well, it comes from, no, 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 well, looky here. Somebody's done that to a shoe for a reason. It's not just run straight across like you would find in some Converse's or set and other, but it's given that extra flair. And these aren't exactly unique necessarily, but we've talked about boots and a lot of other things. And there's some other artifacts associated with that. But the standout, of course, is these that look like, I don't know, man, if you had somebody that was uh, Daniel Boone and so on, and they said, well, this was Daniel Boone's boots and they were special made up, but da-da-da, you'd probably go, wow, they, they look eat up. What, did they get wet or this, that, and the other? But yeah, I could agree with that. Well, let's just take 2,000 years to that and say that these boots are prepared that well from that amount of time. So you can see how it's kept in these ancient Scythians burials, and we've talked about the Scythians and people and everything associated with blonde hair and so on. But they literally are burying these people in somewhat what we would consider to be a log cabin down into a ravine that they made at the time. And above that ravine, you would have a sod and moss and planks of birch bark done into it. Yeah, and when we talk about a log cabin, in a minute we'll see a picture of these planking and things that are made for it. But it's a situation also that looks like natural a little bit. They would take a, be taking from these local trees around here. And apparently due to size and other things, uh, picking out certain ones. It, doesn't, it isn't like, oh, bigger than this, bigger than that. There's a size range definitely that they use for exactly these purposes and so on. But then this is trapped up under and then later becomes entropped with more and more detritus and permafrost sets in and you know oddly like a little time capsule that's held this thing almost as good as you would think or perhaps better because it's leather and so on then someone would find even in an Egyptian tomb which is just freeze dried if you think about it well not really freeze dried it's actually warm it's actually desiccated and dried out for this is something like freeze dried a little more and we've seen these shoes and these boots and stuff not with this exact pattern and stuff onto them but some of them are quite beautiful and unique especially in these hair and base and mummies that we talk about that going back before this time and so you can see a similarity in a connective although this is Altai mountain range there are a lot of connectives people have made as soon as they made the connection to it Hopefully here you can kind of see, well not the total, but how it goes up and on that other side it goes back down. And so it leaves this little point on there. It's that tile, you know, Argyle type shoes. No, no, that was the socks and everything. What do they call it? It's not like the penny loafer style. It has that thing going right across there. Somebody will put it down in the comments, the exact thing. They go, yeah, well that's what we know it today. wonder what they used to call it. Well, they used to call these people Aryans. In fact, she seems to be buried in something right now, and this might be an oak log canoe type burial sarcophagus that they had before. And anyway, you look at something like this, this is just one of them here in the outside. So maybe in a little bit more detail, you can see the fact that it's double stitched and so on, and then double laid over, and there's an arch support, if you will, going along with the healing that's done extra, and it's clasping around your heels. In fact, if we were to cut all of that red and black part out and just put another band of leather right across here, this thing would look pretty much like a sandal. But it's not. Because it has the whole top of the boot and everything, and it's all made onto it and everything. And these were made per person in a special way. But if it would have been sandalish looking almost in your eyes, it'd look more like these Trojans that had those sandals, but then the upper legging little piece that was attached to an extra shin guard and so on onto it that you see and stuff. Like the Trojan War and all that that goes along with it. But this is, doesn't have the shin guards of a warrior, and it doesn't appear to have any buckling that could do that and everything to it. Separately, it has these buckles that are here onto it, and you can see there. <clears throat> intricately worked too and it looks like they're made out of bronze and stuff and somebody said but this is just a comment on a thing of somebody and I don't know who he is that this is kind of upside down and if you did it upside down that it would have said something what did it uh, esca or something along that line like the word escape where it has derivatives that have to do with walking and this, that, and the other, and it almost is funny, comical. It's like, you know, Nike has their swoosh and this, that, and the other. When I have a buckle and this, that, and the other, well, 
Now, this is meant more to be in a ceremonial way. She's dying and going to the afterlife and everything, and then uh, it would almost be as, you know, Godspeed or escape to the afterlife if you could go that far with it in the situation. And here we can see that it's tied off in this one and other side, but the other side has the buckle on it, and that way it does this double cinching across. That today, you know, in shoes we have this string that double attaches and crosses up, much like the side of my legs were in my moccasin, where it didn't really have that down bottom, and you had to get your foot in just right. And once you did, it fit like a glove. Well, these were made per person, unique for each one. I think mean, it's pretty special, you know, it kind of kind of shows this idea of these ancient Scythians and stuff and scouts where they, they had the first venerations and burials and stuff and here you see ancestor veneration and these type of boots that are done. Now this one, of course, has that stitching and lacing and pulling up to be a tighter whole situation around on it. But when we look at something like this and where they're made of and these hasps that go across of it, it's made so well that you're able to point your toe and slide it and get it off in there. Some of them are interlined with wool and things like that, made to go you know, farther ways. And it's amazing that anything of this type of material would be left but scraps. And somebody might say, I think it may have been boots or something, rather than looking at this and going, man, I could see. Somebody said, great grandma's boots, she had some moccasins made by the Indians. And they was, got set out in the... Uh, barn well the barn started leaking and da 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 and we took them in eventually and put them in a box somebody passed this box on to your great grandma and here it is that would almost fit better than somebody saying well this is 300 BC and going on and there's horse bridles and things that look like stirrups and so on, on that are go on and connect with it <coughs> <coughs> pardon me and you can see this ball of twinish type rope that I think we get a better look at later and stuff into it. And other horse type bridles that are made up on it. But this fancy boots, huh? I don't know if you're into tiger stripe or da-da-da and everything, but it probably has a whole different symbology than you might even think. Well, these people hooked up with any type of tiger running? Oh yeah, they have that symbologies and everything. And the ancient lion that no longer exists too, we've talked about, but... Yet there is that effect where well, there's a Siberian tiger. Yeah, so tigers are a little different than what you think of lions, but then we talked about how in other videos that I've got that lions go all the way through. In fact, the upper North African type of lion, or the Barbary Coast type one, ran all the way through Samaria and the Holy Lands and around the Fertile Crescent a long time ago. It's the reason they have that symbology runs all the way up into Europe, but then all of a sudden old cave paintings don't show a maimed one, and they've realized, well, that's the giant cave lion that comes from the last ice age that had died off that people don't even know exists. But sure enough, that lion's in North America and here and gone back and forth like the Indians, but they're saying, no, well, these people that had these badass boots couldn't have done it, huh? Well, there's more to that. We're just looking at these boots here. Taking just a little closer look. And this just been found this year, so it's another new thing here. But again, the bottom of those boots are showing that, well, they didn't really get used at all. And of course, that's ceremonial. Now, these artifacts are found with it, too. And so when we look at this planking, I don't know if you can make it out in the picture and stuff here, but it really looks like something that's like two by six and it's planked all out and stuff and you talk about Pa's cabin and little house on the prairie and this that and the other yeah but he had to have modern things and da, 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 to try to pull that off and you're like well they had something pulling it off pretty good and it, you look at it and now close into the wood too it's not definitely done with a chipping type of effect like some type of sculpting at it if you will if you understand here's another look at these guys and it's just barely in the frame here. Let well, I me mean, know if I pull that back one. You can get a better look at it there. But that's a little different pair of shoes here, and this is done in red and white or red and tan, if you will, and it hasn't been tanned to color and stuff. So you can tell it's already working leather doing it to that point. It's found with an ancient comb here that's done quite well. And if this is the sample I'm talking about, this is where they took a chunk of mammoth tusk and have put it in water and extremely 
high boiling heat, boiled it for a good long while, which works its way from the outside, and then they cut a peel off of that and fold it out a little bit, dry it, then they go cutting into it and make a fine tooth comb. You can find these combs all the way from Denmark and places in far western Europe all the way through this area. In fact, you can find variations on the themes and these hair picks that are bigger or smaller for lice and things like that, and some even two-sided combs all the way in Egypt, North Africa, they're all the way around. All of these same type of people had it, and it goes way back. You know, we could do one on combs. In fact, I may have to. I had one get on my videos and start talking about who made up combs and had combs first, and it's like, God, look at how old these combs are. And Anyhow, kind of centered in this picture, too, is something strange, for there's this handbag type of thing, and women will almost go, well, man, if that had the shoulder hanging thing onto it that have to be that's just a, a modern handbag and it's got a daisy or flower or medicine type pad and if this is the associated find that they have associated with it a lot of times inside of that bag right there is different types of herbs and medicines and sometimes they leave alone and just say herbs and medicines or da, 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 da. other times i might be as scrupulous as mentioning hemp and so on but Recently we talked about, especially around the 420 thing this year, about how there's a lot of these that they found attached to it. In fact, this one lady they knew had died of cancer had had it here, and people talk about CBDs and da-da-da. So a while of a long time ago, or not too long ago, it was very out of fashion because of the way the thing's been traded. All of a sudden, it's a little more in fashion to talk about, hey, these people had a kind of medicine woman situation going on with cancer, and we know now it associates us with help, so maybe they even figured it out that at least portion of it back at that time but we've looked at a lot of people in fact boss wife she shat who's got a leaf upon her head and a lot of people have tried to be like oh it's kind of ambiguous and i don't know why duh right so kind of strange kind of special and uh like share and subscribe and let me know what y'all think down in there in the comments of these badass boots. And ladies, uh, maybe you're not into tiger stripe. Let's say that they just did it with a crosshatch pattern or maybe a tartan pattern, which also conspicuously they found all through these people, different burials, especially ones attached to the Terran Basin type mummies. Oh, on top left-hand corner will be that uh, recent one about cowboys. It's a three-parter and kind of extensive, and I go off. But this is just one thing I left out of it when I mentioned boots and da-da-da and everything. Well, here's a whole deal I could have done just on boots. In fact, hey, they just found some this year. Peace.